Gentlemen, welcome back to some heavy forking 101. You're going to want to make sure that your dear sweet mother has some vinyl on that there Chesterfield on account of we got a dirty, dirty job. What needs doing? You're going to have another kick at the cat. Another poke at the poos, you might say. Now, is there anything finer in this whole wide world than saving some tired old iron from the scrap bin? I say, fuck yeah, there is. Accepting delivery on a brand new fork on the lift would be much, much nicer. However, one small caveat, there's 40 large in the difference. We're going to troubleshoot this. And not knowing anything about the system does not help us troubleshoot. However, I got an ace in a hold. Now, before we get too full of ourselves reading the schematic, we are going to do the simplest thing first. And the simplest thing first is not reading this gobbledygook as elegant as it is, you will recognize how simple this circuit is. We are going to do the easiest thing first, and that is check the batteries. Behold, a crusty lead acid battery right full to the gunnels with angry pixies. You get yourself a good meter for troubleshooting on account of your cognitive load is so high that you don't want to be dicking around with janky connections you don't want to be second guessing your meter all the time, even though you will be second guessing your meter. You'll get erroneous readings all the time, have to move your leads around and so forth. So you want to get a good meter, what you can trust. So we go into volts DC, we select the range we want, one significant digit, and then we just check the positive to the negative. And we got negative 36 volts right on the dot. That means 12 volts. That means each of these should be 2 volts. Each of these cells should be 2 volts. I changed the polarity here, and we have positive. You see, the voltage changed just like that. That's because of the, the way I'm holding the leads, just the, the sun and the moon and the position of your tongue. Now, the question is, this old machine, is it chassis ground? That is, is all the steel connected to the negative of the battery? Or it could be because it's old, it could be positive ground. You definitely want to find that out before you really start dicking around. So we'll go positive to the chassis. No volts. Okay, so we go negative to the chassis. 36 volts. So we know now that this is a positive ground system. Muy importante. Many a jumper cable has been fried because of that little error. Having a gander now at this battery, my spider sense was tickling with good reason. You don't stick your fingy where you wouldn't stick your dinky do. That's part and parcel of the reason I double up on the condoms. But also the ring. What I don't got the combo for, you got to wear some gloves. 36 volts, uh, <laughs> it ain't a big deal, but the 1,000 amps this will output quick, fast, in a hurry is quite a big deal. What we're going to do now is check each cell voltage again. We change the range. Speeds it up. If you change the range to, to what you're expecting, one significant digit, then... Uh, it speeds up the whole process because the meter isn't uh, fluctuating all over the place and you're waiting for it to settle down. So what we want to do here, now we could write all of these down, but we're just looking for one that's oddball. So we got two volts there, and then we got two volts there, and then we got two volts there. I've gone on down the line checking each cell voltage. I want to show you something interesting here. You dick around, you see we're up at 3 volts there, just from moving the lead. So you really got to make sure that your leads are on good and proper. Pass the little patina of oxide, and there we're at 2 volts. Perfect. So all the cells are balanced at 2 volts. They're not completely charged up, so we're going to charge them. Before we charge them, we want to check the electrolyte levels in each cell. What happens is as we charge them up, there's also some electrolysis what happens. Now these are full of sulfuric acid. That is the electrolyte. It's not alien blood. It's not going to burn through the floor, but it will hurt you if it blows up in your face. 
So what you got to do here is you take off ginger carefully, take off the cap, and make sure that the plates are full of water. That is, that they're under the water level. And they all, you want them all to be at roughly the same level. And there you go. You can see the reflection of the fluid over top of the plates. And here is a little bit low cell. It's just at the level of the first plate there. I have five low cells. Now we're going to fill these up. Interestingly, it won't affect the voltage of each cell, but it will affect how many amps it can put out. It'll only affect the voltage if it's completely devoid of water. But if there's just a smidge of water in there, you're still going to get your two volts per cell. I have tested this particular brand of water for um, nefarious purposes, and it is plenty good enough for this. It's actually better than the distilled water which you get from the, the drugstore, surprisingly enough. I hobbled the old girl over here. She is uh, just whopping the angry pixies to her at a high rate of 250 amperes. Gonna run that for four hours, see where she's to. The day last, this prodigious lump of lead and acid failed to consummate the deed. We didn't go full chooch on the charge, so I turned it off on account of not trusting this old gear here to turn off. If you've ever had a battery boil over, you will know the pain. Hairs and vapors reminiscent of a proper whiff of Big Clive's Manx party beard after shoes throwing. Key contact. I got her fully completely charged it. We'll see what she leveled off here now. The thing is, there's a surface charge. Now the surface charger, there's those super keener pixies what want to charge out the gate and then uh, there's a tidal wave of them and it levels off. So what we're worried about is not uh, the surface charge. We want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to run the thing to and fro and then see what we level off at. It looks like we'll probably level off around 36 volts. Well, here's blood in your eye. Avenge my death by clearing my browser history. Key or tact. Sibboleth, Sibboleth. Okay, we're back on. I got the Road Scholar here, Road Link, and uh, sometimes it dechooches on me automatically. Misses all the good bits. Not to worry though, we'll leave in the boring stuff. All right, hold on here, you brain dead motherfucker. You haven't even identified what the problemo is. Okay, so the problemo is, remember while it was on the trailer, it had no reverse, or fuck off or reverse. Well, now it's off the trailer. It's got fuck all for forward. When there's something janky like that, generally it's a bad ground. You know, you get a trailer or any kind of thing where it's a very intermittent problem, weird brake lights doing this, that, the other thing. Generally, it's a bad ground. You're not going to understand it at first glance. What you got to do is break it down into little conceivable bites, little, little bite-sized bits. So what we got going on here is it's a problem with the traction motor. So we start here. This goes back into some contactors, forward and reverse, and then A2 and A3. Now, I assumed that each forward had two speeds, but... The, uh, and using this contactor for creep and um, well engaging this contactor for creep and then engaging this contactor for high speed but now I see that's not the case each for forward and reverse both have three speeds creep a two speed and a three speed so what's going on here is if you just pull in this F con the forward contactor you end up going through some traction resistors. There was a lot of conjecture here as to whether or not there was a, a thyristor in there, a solid state device that was controlling the amperage going to here. That's not the case. This, this device predates the kind of commercialization of that technology. Uh, at least it seems to me it does. You can see how far over here in the, uh, the diagrammatized uh, logic, the traction resistors go before this armature, they're in series with the armature. So what that allows us to do here, oh yeah, and we see A2 and A3 that shorts them out. What that allows us to do is we drop the voltage in creep 
it's going through the entirety of this nichrome resistor. Very likely it's just a coiled up element, either nichrome or um, uh, 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 inconel or, or some sort of heating element essentially. So we have a heater in series with the armature. What that does is it limits the current. It's a current limiting resistor. It also drops the voltage that the, uh, the armature of the traction motor sees. Lower voltage in a DC motor means it turns slower. So you get a double whammy there. You're getting less torque and creep, but you're also getting less uh, speed. So kind of a, not the best way to control it with a resistor. If they had some solid state devices in here, then you could have full torque and creep. And I think that's what we saw when it was stranded on the trailer was we couldn't get it to torque up enough to actually pull itself up the ramp. Uh, we need to be able to engage it at full speed. So that's kind of a little bit creepy. Couple that with the fact that it's Armstrong steering. You can see here there's a steering motor ghosted out. It does not have that option and I know it doesn't have that option because it doesn't have the corn tractor uh, steering. It is missing that corn tractor. It does have the lift and tilt corn tractor however. Obviously you need the hydraulics to uh, lift up your pallets. And so getting back to the traction motor control what happens is if we depress the pedal just a wee bit, we get forward in creep. That means the uh, angry pixie dance goes through the entirety of the tra traction resistors. Now if we go depress the pedal further, we actuate this A2 and that short circuits, you can see it over here, that short circuits part of that resistor and it's got less resistor to go through. Less resistor means less resistance. You get more voltage to the motor, you get more current to the motor. And then in A3, we just get full chooch. It totally bypasses um, this resistor. Actually, no, there's four speeds. There's four speeds because you can close this one, this A2, you get one speed. You can close this A3, you get another speed, and you can close both of them and you get full chooch. Uh, it seems to be when the machine is cool. Recall there's these heaters in here, these resistive heating elements in here what control the motor speed. It seems to be when they're cool, everything works in creep. But then if you extend down and try and get these to engage, they only engage intermittently. And then after it heats up, neither the forward nor the reverse engage. So what's the commonality there? What, what is common to all of these components? The reversing switch. That's the switch on the column for forward reverse and that also gets actuated by the safety seat switch. So easiest thing first, have a look at that switch. Heretofore obfuscated by ignorance, we are going to have a look-see at these and see if we can match up what's going on. You might notice that I've already marked it Again, I had some trouble with the, uh, the road scholarliness. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put her in reverse and I'm going to actuate the pedal right here. I'm just going to move this switch around and it should actuate these contactors. Forward, reverse contactor. That's forward creep, reverse creep. These are the speeds. When they kick in, one, two, both, you get different speeds. If both of these kick in, you're in high gear. If none of them kick in, you're just in creep. Reverse. And we're just pulling in that contact because I pushed the accelerator pedal far enough. And it looks like this is the only guy working. This guy's completely dead. Now I'm a fiddle a tiddly bit with the selector, reverse neutral forward selector. I'm just going to give her the old Fonzarelli some tappy tap tap action and see if we can't get this Jesus thing to go into reverse. There we go, and we're moving. Now forward. Okay, now it's getting progressively worse. We're in the same situation with reverse. I'm going to give this little square D selector a tap. Let's 
see if that's going to work. Aha! Okay. So we know the problem. Uh, it's this guy. What's the problem? You see we've disconnected the safety. That is the seat uh, neutral switch. So if the seat is not depressed, if the operator isn't in the seat, then this acts like it's in neutral, so it will not go. So we have for reverse forward neutral. And before we turn off the battery here, there are a couple love taps. Reverse. Yeah. You know it's bad when you can't tap it back to life. Nothing for it. Got to take it apart. Ah, given enough time and money, we can fix anything. In this case, time and beers. You see, all crusty. The corn tacks, filthy, pitted. And in this case, on the forward side, I'll show you this here. I already got this camera all trained up. Son of a diddly. I'm going to miss saying focus, you fuck. It's not even touching. It ain't even trying. So, what we got to do, it seems as though there's a mechanism in there with some detents, and that needs to go over further as well. We got to clean up those um, cadmium or maybe silver contacts. Thinking about this now, what you do proper wise is take this right off, clean it up, take it off the machine, take all the connections off, and so forth. However, you can tell there's a very robust switch. And if we need to, we can just, well, she's already fucked. We're not going to fuck it anymore. But if you needed to, what you could do is have a momentary or, a, you know, a three position, just a toggle switch. So in that case, we're going to take a, we're just going to, we're going to do a temporary fix. And there is nothing more permanent than a temporary solution that works. Temporary is only temporary if it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. So there's a bit of a misalignment there now. But, fuck all in a big ship. Now we'll clean those up a little bit too, just with some crocus cloth. And uh, then we'll give her another go. All right, lads, fully engaged it. Let's give you a go. <laughs> The bell of the ball machine, her and her whole family. Thunder punched a lot of them, ready to send them off to the scrap bin. Dumpster fire and all. However, she got wind of it and uh, smartened up. So she'll do for now. Thanks for watching and joining me in the shop for a giggle and a gurgle and a chuckle of beer. Uh, hope you, well, if you, if you didn't learn something, at least we could, uh, we could poke fun at my ineptness in forking. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.